Hi there, I'm Carla Cannon, and in this video, I'm going to share with you some of my top curriculum choices for fifth grade. My son uh, just wrapped up fifth grade this spring, and I'm already planning for his next year, so thought I would start with this. I am going to go through each subject, what we used, and I'm going to go through it fairly quickly because I have reviews on each thing, each item, uh, separately from this, so I won't go too deeply into each thing, but if you're interested for more information on a particular curriculum or item that I have, just look in the description below and I will try to link my other videos that I've done on the various things that I'm going to show you. All right, let's start with math because it is short and simple. We use teaching textbooks. I love teaching textbooks. My kids love it. Um, I need some subjects that they can do independently. And with teaching textbooks, they can watch the lesson, do the problems, and it grades it for them. And they only need me if they need help. So my son finished the fifth grade teaching textbook and is part of the way through the sixth grade one. He enjoys math and it is something he is able to go through fairly quickly. The only thing that I would say is that if you have a child who's doing well, um, we do not necessarily do all the problems in every lesson. As long as things are going smoothly, then I will pick and choose uh, in the actual textbook. They uh, don't write in the textbook, but I use it just to look through the lesson and circle some of the problems just because as they get to these higher books of math it does take a while not because it's necessarily hard but sometimes there's a lot of steps to solving longer problems so I will just pick and choose which ones I have them do as long as they're understanding it and it's going well. Social studies this year, we kept it pretty simple because it is an area that I have focused on a lot because I like it, I enjoy it. And I just felt that this year we needed to spend more time doing science and science topics. And so for this year, we focused on current events because it was 2020, 2021, and there was just a whole lot going on in the world with the pandemic. So we would watch, you know, news clips and talk about it. And that was good a little geography mixed in with where things are happening. And then the other thing that uh, my son Nathan did, and he did this independently, is that he loved he prefers with his reading uh, nonfiction, typically speaking. And and so we just loved the Who Was series. There's also, you know, the What Was. So he read a whole bunch of these books, like Who Was Martin Luther King? What Was D-Day? They have just, they're an easy read, enough information that it is interesting, but not overwhelming and not dry. And so we, he really liked these. I ordered them when I did my curriculum order at the beginning of the year from christianbook.com. They had them on sale for, you know, three fifty four dollars a piece American. And so I just stocked up on a whole bunch of those and he just worked his way through them. And that was really what we did for social studies this year, because I think it is okay if you've hit subjects hard other years, it's okay to have a different focus. And so this year, our focus was more on the science topics. So for science, that was my focus this year. We were home more than ever before. So we did quite a few different things. Um, we continue to use and love the Abeka science textbooks. Um, I have a whole different review on that. So if you want to really dig into that, you can check that out. Um, I tend to go a grade below where my kids are at. So this particular one, uh, Understanding God's World, was the grade four book. Uh, this is a Christian uh, perspective on science, which I really like, but I do believe anyone could use it and enjoy it. Uh, they have nice pictures. The daily reading is broken up into bite-sized amounts. 
And so I like that this is something that he could do just once again completely on his own. I do buy, there's lots of companion things you can purchase uh, with the Abeka Science. And so I get, like I said, a grade below where they're at, I think is a nice level so that they can really understand some of the scientific terms and just be a good uh, independent subject. So I purchased the textbook and then I get the answer key for the textbook. And then sometimes I'll get the booklet of tests and quizzes and then the answer key for that. So I end up getting four things, um, but they're very inexpensive and so that works for us. And it's not that I get the tests, we don't necessarily do all of them, but I get them just for that practice of taking a test because in our homeschool, we don't do a lot of tests. And so it's just an easy way for them to do a little bit of that um, test taking skills with content that they're uh, comfortable and familiar with. So that was the first part of his science was that he just worked through this and read about a section every day that we did school. I have a whole review on History Alive, and in there I explain how each year they have a different focus. So for 2020-21, uh, there it was a science focus, so each day my son really looked forward to watching Daniel's video on whatever the topic was, and that topic changed each month, and so that was, once again, something he did on his own and just learned so many great facts and things through that. And then the very last month uh, that, of that was bios, uh, biodomes and ecosystems. And we bought one of Daniel's recommended books. And so in addition to doing the videos each day, he did reading along uh, from the book and he really enjoyed that. And so it really made it a complete science mini unit study that was super hands off for me, but he said was a highlight from his year. And so I really recommend, I can't say it enough, the his, uh, history alive, but the topic was science this past year. So that was great too. The big new thing that we did all together as a family this past year was gather around and I specifically picked all science topics. And so we did that as a whole family. Once again, I have reviews on Gather Round and my thoughts on that, but it was just so much fun in a year where we were home and you know you could use it as a complete curriculum and we kind of used pieces of it and then other things that we like. And so if there is even just one unit or topic that interests you, you could grab that and work through that, you know, through the year without with your kids. And so the ones that we did, we did oceans, which has a very heavy focus on ocean animals. We did human anatomy. We did earth science. And so those were the ones that we had done from them. And we also did their novel study, Underground to Canada, and really enjoyed all of those and the learning we did as a family, lots of hands-on experiments that we did in projects. So that was a lot of fun. So language arts is the last uh, subject that I'm going to talk about. And it's always the trickiest one for me to share about because I have so many different things that I use and pull from and resources. But as you watch this, just remember a couple things. Number one, I have been doing this for a long time. I was homeschooled. We've been homeschooling for you know, many, many, many years now. And so I didn't necessarily go out and buy all this curriculum new. I have an older child. And so sometimes, you know, she will not finish a book in something and then we will just do some of the lessons from a book. So for all the things that I'm going to show you now, we did not do every lesson. In a lot of the cases, we probably did less than half of them, but I like to mix it up. I like to keep things interesting. And so as we get tired with one thing, then we'll throw in another. And we like to tie in our language arts into other subjects and things that we're doing. And so don't get overwhelmed and just know that we're just pulling pieces out of everything. And somehow we just really make that work 
for our family and it saves me and the kids from getting tired of things. If you are on my channel, you likely know I am a huge fan of IEW. So we, with my son Nathan, we started IEW in third grade and he did the Bible Heroes program over third and fourth grade. And I am just so impressed what a fabulous foundation in the program that gave him, how much he learned and how much he remembered. And so for his writing, you know, because he's familiar with the program, this is the beauty of IEW when you get to the point where your child has worked their way through the various units and understands how it worked, you can work that into other subjects. So we did use um, some of the lessons and assignments from all Things Fun and Fascinating, which is one of my very, very, very favorite IEW uh, products that are out there. And it is just perfect for, you know, grades four, five, six, things in, you know, somewhere in there. So he did some writing projects from here, but we didn't work through this book from beginning to end because he knows the program. I'd say, hey, let's do a project from unit Four, and I'd pull that lesson out and we would do that lesson as a review and he would do the project and I did that through the various units. So he did some things from this and really liked it. We also pulled lessons from the new structure and style for students that I have talked about lots. And so he did some of the lessons from that. But once again, I just picked and chose which ones I wanted him to do because he knows the program. And so that level A year one would have been a lot of review for him. And so it was just easy to pull some things out of that. The other thing is with his writing is that was a big part of he we oh, we didn't do IEW separately but when we did our gather when we did our gather round units what we did is he would use the skills and the tools that he's developed through the IEW writing program and then use those for writing projects within gather round so for example we did their novel study um, it was called Underground to Canada and it was excellent. We all really, really enjoyed it. So we did that and he read that book. And then the writing project for that, in addition to taking notes and doing summaries and things like that, was to write a book report. And so then we just used the IEW uh, method, their um, story sequence chart, and that's what he used for his book report. So we really meshed, you know, writing skills, literature, as well as, um, you know, history, social studies, all that kind of tied in. And so that's how I like to approach language arts is it just kind of becomes part of other things that we do. And as I mentioned before, he really liked these who was books. And so then he read as you know, additional literature, history, however you want to look at it. He read these, you know, on he read Martin Luther King, Rosa Parks, Harriet Tubman, and just kind of went through a whole bunch like that. So that worked really well for us to mesh that all together. And I think that's the goal, you know, as you get comfortable doing it. Other things that we pulled from but did not do in their entirety, the first kind of half of his grade five year, we didn't do a lot of formal grammar. I don't think you necessarily need to do grammar every year, every day. And so there's some of that mixed into the gather round stuff that he did. And then we started at some point in the second part of the year, the fix it grammar, the nose tree, I think grade five, four, five, six is a nice age to start this book. So he um, started it, we worked through it, it went well, and he just got, you know, a uh, maybe about a third of the way through that. And so he will continue that next year and that will be really good for grammar. And it also includes um, copy work and vocabulary as well. Speaking of copy work, we also continue to like the spelling you see. So I had the spelling you see D and this was the book two that his sister had only gotten a little bit of the way through. And so he worked, he just picked up wherever she'd left off and it was a good level for him. And so then he did some of these as copy work and as dictation. Here's a little example of what 
that level looks like. And so um, this is not something we did every day or even every week, but he worked through some of that on weeks where perhaps he didn't have as big of a writing project or something like that. We also continue to love Wordly Wise. Again, my daughter, who is older than him, had not completed the grade five Wordly Wise book when she did it, so no problem, I got my money's worth, and I just had him pick up once again where she had left off and do several lessons out of this. I encourage you to watch my Wordly Wise review because I talk about kind of how we approach it and how that works really well for our family. So I. I think this is great and it's a nice thing to throw in there. It's inexpensive and it just kind of mixes things up when maybe he's getting tired of copy work or writing projects or grammar and it's just another approach to it. And so we continue to really enjoy and use the Wordly Wise books. Other things that I just wanted to mention that we threw in there is he did typing regularly. He just, we just used the free typing club and he works his way independently through those programs so I like him to do that. I We were home this past year more than we have ever been and so then instead of you know him doing hockey or skiing or a lot of those other things that kept him active we you know if they weren't just going outside if the weather didn't cooperate then I would have him exercise was on his list we have a treadmill lots of times he would just you know do a 30 minute run and he was allowed to watch a show while he did that so that was a good way to keep uh, some of the wiggles out and other things let me think he this Christmas uh, since we couldn't get together with family we did a virtual zoom Christmas party and all the kids prepared either a musical piece or something like that and so he memorized the entire poem the cremation of Sam McGee which I was very proud of him that was a huge accomplishment and then that was a great way for him to practice speaking clearly and with good articulation and in front of people People. I also motivated him to do that because he wasn't loving the idea initially so don't tell his sisters but I paid him 50 bucks to do that so he was uh, well motivated to do a good job and I was really proud of him. The other thing that I have him do is on his daily list is I have him read for 30 minutes a day and I think you have to be careful with that one. If your child is picking up a book in their free time and just reading, 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 I don't think that's necessary. But he he listens to hours and hours of audiobooks. He loves that, but I like to have him reading a physical book as well and so then um, I would just put that on his list and he would read you know either something I suggested or you know a book that he chose I was fine as long as he was getting that 30 minutes of reading every day so that was another thing I'll show you his list um, but know that it did change throughout the year depending if we were doing a gather round unit but our basic system is that I just make them a list I put it in a sheet protector like I said it does change throughout the year but this is just kind of a sample one and then for the most part he would get up in the morning and kind of choose uh, what it was that he wanted to do in what order you know if he needed help with something we try to do that earlier in the day and then typically we do our math right after lunch but uh, he as he gets older likes to have the independence and choice in kind of planning out his day so as long as things were done um, I was pretty happy for him to come up with his own plan and execute it so Overall, we used a lot of things. I just want you to know that um, do what works for your family. If having just a few things and doing those consistently works for your family, go with that. If you are like me and you have lots of things and you wanna pull from them, just know that it is good and beneficial to use things, but it doesn't mean that you failed if you haven't used them in their entirety. A lot of benefit can come from doing six wordly wise lessons, which is, you know, great. And you don't have to do all 20. There are still benefits from that. So just uh, do what works for your family. Hopefully you got some ideas on things that I like and have worked for my kids and I. Happy planning.